you've tuned in to the 49ers Rush Podcast, and here is your host, John Chapman. All right, 49ers fans, this is a great day. The NFL has found a way to make sure that they are in the forefront of everybody's mind nonstop and have released the NFL schedules for the upcoming year. And this is a fun day because this is where you sit down and you rank all the games and what's going to be the tough stretch and what's the easy stretch. And, man, if we win these swing games and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do, this is a full schedule breakdown episode. It's going to be entirely based on the schedule. We're going to pause all our draft talk. Don't worry, we'll get back to that very, very soon. But everything is about the schedule today. So, um, you know, we have 16 games, and the way the schedule works, it's funny because whenever you get down on Twitter and you see people saying, man, the NFL screwed us, and oh my gosh, why do we have to play all these teams? It's all formulated. It's not random. So, for example, you play every team in your division twice. Obviously, that's six games. Um, then you it rotates the different divisions between AFC and NFC um, so that, one, the distance isn't insane, and also so teams can play everybody at least once every four years. So this year we drew the NFC South and the AFC North, and so that's eight games because you play everybody in those divisions. And then because we finished third in the NFC West, we play the third-place team in the remaining NFC divisions that we do not play the whole thing. So, uh, for example, the NFC East, we play Washington. And then for the NFC North, we play Green Bay. So those are the remaining two games. So that's kind of the way that the formula works. And, you know, we've known for a while what the home games are going to be and what the road games are going to be, the opponents. But once they fill out the schedule and all those things, um, it kind of pieces it together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through week by week, give a couple details on each game, um, and most importantly, I have ranked every single game from number one, most difficult, to number 16, uh, most winnable. So for every single week, we're just going to go line by line and rank these, not so much, you know, say, oh, this is going to be a win, this is going to be a loss. I know a lot of people are going to do that, and we might do something like that. Uh, closer to the season, but right now I just want to rank the games as far as difficulty, one being the most difficult and 16 being the most uh, winnable game. So let's jump in right off the bat. You know, we, we, we start off, you know, the first half of our schedule is pretty legit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, second half of the schedule, man, we are, <laughs> it's stacked against us late. But um, if we get out to a good start, which I think is very, very possible with the schedule, there's a lot of winnable games early. But weeks one and two, we open up on the road. You know, we don't get our first home game until week three. But week one is at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's going to be a Sunday 125 game, which I have the times in here, and the times are very, very important as far as travel goes for both teams. Uh, East Coast coming to West Coast is difficult early in the morning, and West Coast going to East Coast is also very, very difficult early in the morning. So whenever you do have that Sunday game on the opposite coast, you never want the 10 a.m., and we got a couple of them. But luckily week one, you know, at Tampa Bay, 125, so that's good. You know, the Tampa Bay Bucks, they got a whole new coaching staff. They're, they're an absolute mess on defense. But that offense is legit. They go 5-11 and 11 last year. And I have this, even though it's a road game, and you're going to see this a lot as we continue. This is the 13th most difficult game we have, so out of 16. So uh, the fact that I have a road game ranked this high is insane. The Bucks they beat us uh, very recently, but this is a very winnable game. That's week one. Then we go right back to this. We're still on the road at Cincinnati. We get the Bengals, and this is a 10 a.m. kickoff on Sunday. Now, you know, it's not, you know, it's it's kind of, it's the Midwest. We're not all the way over on the East Coast, but the Bengals have a lot of good things in place. You know, they have a very deep roster, but their offensive line is a mess. And what are they going to do at the quarterback position? You know, they got a new offensive a head coach coming over there. They went 6-10 and 10 last year. I have this ranked as the number 11 um, hardest game that we have. So, again, 1 is the hardest, 16 is the easiest. And we start off, again, with a 13-11. and 11. And, yes, they are two road games. 
But those are two winnable road games right off the bat. And in the NFL, usually here's the way it goes. Eight home, eight on the road. You want to go six and two, at least at home, if not more. And your goal is to win half of your road games. If you do that, your 10 games, your 10 uh, winners, and you're going to be in the playoffs. So six and two at home and 500 on the road. And so if you could start off two and oh, which, you know, that's great. You're two and oh and all, but two and oh on the road. You know, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much here, but the 49ers with the way this schedule is laid out, they better start fast. And, you know, we all have slip up games. Every single NFL team does. But, you know, if, if, if we come out 0-2, even though they're road games, watch out. It's going to get ugly quick. Now, our first home game is against the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. That's a 125 game on Sunday. I have this ranked as our ninth um, game. So right in the middle. This is going to be one of those coin flip games. What are the Steelers going to look like? Uh, there's a lot of changes. You know, Antonio Brown's gone. Le'Veon Bell's gone. I know he was gone all last year, but... It, they won some games, don't get me wrong. They're a 9-6-1, and one, but there's just a lot of turmoil in that program, which we haven't seen with the Steelers. How is Big Ben going to play? Um, you know, he's getting older and older and older. It's just going to be interesting dynamic there. So this is a game that could go either way. And the fact that you have three very winnable games, you know, again, if we, if we rank 1-16, through 16, None of our first three opponents are in the top half. We have a 13, 11, and a 9. So very, very winnable. And then week four is our bye. So I, right off the bat, I hate week four buys. I can't stand it because then what you have to do is you've got to go the rest of the season without a break. Now, we do get a little bit of a break later. I don't want to jump forward too much in week nine. Uh, I'll talk about that. But let's try to look at the bye week and week four as a good thing. As a coach, I, I've, I've been a part of teams that have transitioned out of bad coaching and a lot of losses. It takes a while to learn how to win. The 49ers have been very, very bad since Harbaugh left. And not necessarily just because of Harbaugh, but just dating the time. You've got to learn how to win. So if the 49ers can get out of these first three weeks heading into our bye, 2-1 and one, or shoot 3-0, and oh, that's going to be gigantic. Because you've got to have time to, one, build confidence, and two, get used to each other. We still have a very inexperienced quarterback that's only played three games with, with the 49ers. We had a lot of rookies playing last year. We had the most rookies play in 2017. This is a young team, a very, very young team. So the fact that this bye week is there, if we can go in on a winning note or at least a winning record, 2-1, and 3-0, and oh, this is going to be huge. However, the flip side of that argument is very obvious. If we go into that 1-2 and two or 0-3, oh just prepare. It's going to be a hellacious season. Um, you know, I, I don't want to think that way, but that's just the reality. So uh, it's going to be a very easy, all right, let's step back and figure things out moment. Now, then we come back week five. This is going to be one of our primetime games. We only got three of them. Week five, we get to play. The Cleveland Browns are coming to San Francisco for the Monday night football game. And this is going to be an absolute blast. Uh, this is going to be just a very fun game. You know, you got Baker Mayfield versus Jimmy G. Two kind of young, surging teams, hopefully. I'd say the Browns are definitely surging. Odell Beckham, I mean, goodness, it's just going to be a lot of fun. And then on top of that, here's kind of the kicker. The Browns, are they don't have a week four bye. So we get a full week off, an additional week off. They have to play. The Browns are playing the Ravens. They're traveling to Baltimore the previous week. So we're going to have a full extra week up on them. But this is a tough game, make no mistakes, because even though it's a home game, even though we're coming off of a bye, even though the Browns aren't coming off of a bye, they are a legit division winner slash playoff caliber roster. Um, but because of all the other things I said, the bye week, home game, all that stuff, I have this as our number six game. 
because, again, just all those things, the Browns are going to be coming off playing the Ravens, which they're just going to knock the mess out of each other, and they're going to be banged up. So hopefully we can get this win. That's going to be a tough one. Again, I mean, it's a top six game for us. It's definitely not easy, but because it is home and off of a bye. Right after that, this is a rough stretch, these two games. Week six, we travel to Los Angeles, the Rams, and that's a 1 o'clock kickoff on Sunday. This is the second hardest matchup um, of the year, and it's funny. (laughs) How could you have a tougher matchup than at the Los Angeles Rams who are in the Super Bowl? Um, How is that possible? Well, we'll see. You know, we, We haven't played well against the Rams last year. Both the games were kind of a mess. Um but this is going to be a tough game, and the fact that it's after a Monday night football, it's going to be a short week. You know that that day matters; it, it really does. But hopefully, coming off of by the previous week, we'll be able to make up for that. Then we have to travel to Washington, so we got a road game, and that's a ten o'clock Sunday kickoff. That sucks. <laughs> you don't want to travel all the way across, uh, especially after you know a tough game in Los Angeles which, I mean, you could say it's going to be lost. I don't want to do that, but it's going to be a tough game. And so Washington is one of the worst teams in the NFL. And even though this is a a road game, I have it ranked as the 15th game. So it's the second easiest game we got all year, and it's on the road. The, The best thing about this schedule is this. We have so many winnable road games uh it's a i'll break it down in further detail as we get through this but let's keep going week eight we get to come home the panthers will be traveling across the country and we have a 1 p.m sunday kickoff this is the 12th ranked game on our schedule uh so very winnable game you know who knows what's going to happen with cam newton last time he came out they beat us but um man the panthers they've definitely got some holes their offensive weapons are interesting to say the least. You know, Christian McCaffrey's absolutely incredible, but there's a huge question mark on Cam Newton right now and his health. Then week nine, um, we get the ever dreadful road Thursday game. Holy cow, this is just absolute trash. At uh, Arizona Cardinals, so it's not too far, 5 p.m. This is the Thursday night game. This is my number 14 game. Which, you know, I'm, I'm not a big believer in the cards. Again, I think they are one of those teams that is one of the worst teams in the NFL, rosters-wise. We'll see what they do in the draft, you know, if they're going to just allow Rosen to kind of trade him away for, you know, a second-round pick or whatever and just spend all that draft capital on the quarterback position. We'll see. Um, we're just going to have to see what's going on. But the good thing about this is this. Because we play on Thursday, our next week game, Week 10, is a Monday night football game again. So we got two Monday night football games, and it's at home versus Seattle. So we get you know those extra days afterwards. So it's like a mini buy because we play Thursday, then you get Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Well, guess what? Seattle, who we're playing next week, they have the late game Thursday, uh, Sunday. So we're getting another three full days rest over Seattle, our division opponent, and then they have to travel to us. It seems like the NFL is starting to do this. They did this the last couple of years, that if you are the road team on a Thursday short week, they're going to help you out a little bit on that following week. It seems to be the NFL has complained so much about Thursday night games because it's just it's a health issue. The players don't get rested, they don't get to sleep, their bodies don't heal, then they got to go back out there and play. It's very it's wrong, but it's not going anywhere because the NFL can talk all they want about safety. It's not about safety. It's about money and it's about TV sets. And the ratings are just exceptional on Thursday night cuz there's zero competition. So as long as that's the case, Thursday night games they're not going anywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if they added you know, another type of game during the week or something because whatever the NFL does, people watch it. It's just what it is. So anyway, at week nine, we're at the card sets, the Thursday night game. And then week 10, we are at home, Monday night football, Seattle. And this is a, the seven game for me. So it's right in that middle coin flip game. Seattle is a playoff team. Yeah, they just signed Russell Wilson for the most money of any quarterback and all that kind of stuff, whatever, um, you know, when Seattle plays us, that's that's a tough game. We beat them last year at home. Hopefully we could do that again. That's going to be a lot of fun on Monday night. I'm really looking forward to that game. 
Week 11, we get the cards again. They did this to us last year where we played the Cardinals, um, you know, just two weeks apart from each other. So we play them week 9, then week 11. I'm okay with that because it cuts down on some film stuff because week 10, we have a Monday night football game, uh, which means you lose a day of prep. Usually you lose your rest uh, day. But because we played the Cardinals two weeks before that, it's really not that big of a deal. We know the Cardinals very, very well, even though they have new coaching staff, new scheme and all that stuff. But we know their personnel. We know a lot about what they do. This is our easiest game of the schedule. Cards, week 11, 1 p.m. Sunday, the most winnable game that we have on our roster. We've got to get week 11. Followed by that, we have the Packers at home, uh, 1 p.m. Sunday kickoff. I have this ranked as the 10th easiest or most winnable game. So it's it's a little bit on the winnable side. You could talk about Aaron Rodgers. You could talk about the holes that they filled and all the free agency signings. Yes, they got two first-round picks. I get all those things. I just don't believe in the Packers winning. <laughs> um, it's been a while since they have put together a season, and for some reason they always struggle with us. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there, but I do think that this is a winnable game for us and it gets ugly quick after week 12. So week 13 at the Baltimore Ravens, that's a 10 PM kickoff. That's bullshit. Uh, it's, it's, it's wrong. You should not do this to teams that have to fly across the coast and have a 10, 10 AM kickoff. It's not cool. Um, this is the number five game for me. Ravens play great defense, and you're traveling all the way across. I just don't like the way that they're a playoff team. There's just a lot of things I don't like about this. Follow that up. This is our toughest game, Week 14, at New Orleans, the Saints, 10 a.m. kickoff. Um, This is the toughest game for me. I think that the Saints might have the best rosters, uh, you know, offense and defense in the entire NFL. They are a stacked, loaded team without a lot of weaknesses, and I, I... the Saints are just unbelievable. So this is going to be the toughest game, in my opinion, for the 49ers all year. Uh, week 15, Falcons at home. Falcons are a good team, yeah? They, they went 7-9 and nine last year. I get it. Barely missed the playoffs, but they've got a lot of firepower. It's going to be kind of fun having, you know, Coach Shanahan coach against, you know, his, his old coach and his old team and all that stuff it's going to be a lot of fun this is the number eight game for me so this is this close to a flip as you can get to but it is a home game so that that's why you know it's a little bit easier but i think the falcons roster is very very good and they've played against kyle shanahan um that defense has every day in practice so they're going to be it's going to be an interesting game week 16 uh this is the rams it's going to be a home game but this is already kind of a flex position. This is what they're doing in week 16 and 17, where it could be a Saturday or a Sunday game. Uh, They haven't said yet, and they're going to wait to announce that. Uh, A little over a week and a half before is when they'll flex it to whatever they want it to be at. Um, This is the number four overall game for me. Yeah, Um, it's at home, but still, the Rams are, you know, they, they played in the Super Bowl for a reason. They're a pretty damn good football team, and we end the season week 17 on the road, we start on the road, we end on the road at Seattle, <laughs> 1 p.m. Sunday. This is the third most difficult game on our schedule. And so so that's kind of what we got. So uh, I, I got a lot of little dr- uh, tidbits that I want to talk to that I broke down about this. So hold on real quick. But I want to say thanks to our sponsors, Game Day Sports and Memorabilia. They are incredible. Uh, just sent out that DeForest Buckner jersey not too long ago. Oh, it's so sad to see it go. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more stuff with them soon. But if you need anything, sports memorabilia of any kind, head over. Game Day Sports and Memorabilia, they are the best. Game Day Sports and Memorabilia, let them know that the 49ers Rush Podcast, John Chapman, sent them over. So here's what I want to do now is I just want to pay attention to the home game away games and the strength of each team. So uh, I put all the numbers as far as winnable games or difficult games. Remember, one's the hardest, 16's the easiest. These are our home games, not in order, but just the total. The fourth hardest, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, twelfth, sixteen. So let me say that again. These are the home games as far as difficult matchups that we have. Okay, these are all at home. 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 16. 
we've got some tough home games, but there's some winnable ones. Now, if we look at the road games, you pay attention right off the bat, okay? These are the road games. It's a tell of two cities right here. We have the toughest, the number one, the number two, the number three, to the number five, all away games. Yeah, those are really hard games, but here's the other side of that. 11, 13, 14, 15. All away games. So it's very easy to see going 4-4 four and four on the road makes perfect sense. And that is a dream. If we go 4-4 four and four on the road, we're going to be all right. I, I really do believe that. I do think that we will have an outside shot at making the playoffs with that. Now, most teams don't have this many winnable games on the road. It, it, we, we are very lucky from that standpoint. But whatever. Um, so we got to get started early because, again, four of the five hardest games of the week are from weeks 13 through 17. Again, that's at Ravens, at Saints, Falcons home, Rams home, at Seattle. That is just brutal. Probably as tough of a stretch as any team in the NFL has the whole year. But if we get off to a great start, uh, that can kind of cancel and negate that out. Okay, um, so I, I do believe that there is a very strong possibility of starting off seven and three or eight and two. Uh, you know, I definitely have my rose-colored glasses on, but that is a strong possibility. If we are six and four, getting into week eleven, I don't think we make the playoffs. I, I really, really don't. We've got to get to that week, that seventh win before week eleven, and then you know you got the Cards, Packers. Try to get one of those. That's going to get you to eight, and then you're going to have to sneak one or two wins out of that murder's row at the very end. You're not going to lose five straight games and get into the playoffs. That's not a reality. You're going to have to win one of those. Now, a couple things. We never have a stretch of the schedule where we have more than two road games in a row. So we have two road games a few times, but never more than two is great. We do have a three-game home stretch from weeks 10, 11, and 12. Uh, I think that's that's huge, and that's going to pay dividends for sure. Um, we do have three East Coast uh, road games that kick off at 10 a.m. That's total bullshit. That is awful by the front office. That is terrible. Uh, they uh, That should have been fixed. But part of this is the 49ers' fault. Like They usually flex or pick the games that are more entertaining to put in the afternoon. And so this is a byproduct of not winning a lot of games. You, know, you win games. People want to watch you. It's very, very common. They stack all the games at 10 o'clock that people don't want to watch. And so the fact that you, <laughs> we finished third in our division and we're picking second in the draft, that kind of – we earned that. So something that – it's a it's a huge bummer, but it is what it is. Now the record of our, 20, or of our opponents in 2018 is interesting. They went 129 – wins 124 losses and three ties uh it's funny there's three ties on there but that's just kind of what it is so yes they have a winning record overall but a lot of that has to do with the rams who we play twice and the seahawks who we play twice this was kind of i just tweeted this out not too long ago right before i started recording we only have four playoff teams on our schedule uh, the ravens the saints the Rams and the Seahawks. Now, we do have to play the Rams and the Seahawks twice, so that means six playoff games or six games are against playoff opponents from 2018. Well, don't have to do too much math. <laughs> Non-playoff teams, that's nine. We have nine playoff teams plus, you know, we play Cardinals twice, so that's going to be ten. So ten games in our schedule are against non-playoff teams and six are against playoff teams teams and then we have three primetime games that we get a look at you know two monday night games we've got one against the browns we've got one against seattle and then the thursday night game against the cards and all of those happen uh weeks five weeks nine week ten so it's going to be interesting i like the way that the schedule broke down you know not a lot of super long road trips which is great but we'll, we got to get off to a fast start. That's all I got to say. So uh, we'll be back with regular scheduled draft content. I'm so excited. I am flying out to Nashville super early next week, and I will be out there uh, recording live as the picks happen with as much as I can get to you guys. So excited. So stay tuned. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and leave us a review. It helps us out a lot here. Take care, guys.